Hello everyone! In today's core concept video, we will take a brief look at a couple of user input options. We'll take a look first at the read host commandlet, and we'll follow that up with a brief look at the parameters that you can add to your script. So, various ways to sometimes uh, get user input on your scripts that could modify those scripts in a certain way. It's uh, got a lot of use cases. There are very many examples as to why that can be important. Um, today I'm just going to focus on a quick demo of a couple of different uh, ways to do that. So let's go ahead and start with the read host. So I've got a demo script here written. And basically the way read hosts works, and we're going to be focusing primarily on just this line 5 actually. Uh, I'm not going to really be looking at the if-else block and what we're doing here. Um, there's definitely a lot we could talk about with the various um, static um, classes and static methods that we're using here and some interesting things. But suffice it to say, this script is just going to get us some information about our C drive and it's going to get us some information um, about the memory usage. So the way that we're going to uh, highlight this, though, is by letting the user decide what they want to have returned. So let's just uh, run the script, and we'll talk about it a little bit. So this presents to me, the user of the script, a couple of options. For C uh, drive free space, enter 1. For RAM usage information, enter 2. So let's say I want RAM usage, enter 2. Um, it's obviously rounding again, so it says RAM usage in gigs, 8 of 16. So if you look, it's at 7.5, so it's rounding to 8 out of 15.9. Uh, so 8 out of gig, uh, 8 gig out of 16. Now if we run this again, let's say, um, sure, let's select option 1 and hit enter this time and free space on C and gigs is 11. So if we bring this back up, we see indeed 11 gigs out of 118. Um, definitely need to find some free space on this drive, but uh, it's it's definitely returning accurate information based on the if-else block and what it's doing here. But uh, to focus back on the read host, basically um, the prompt parameter is the most... Um, essential here. Um, it's basically going to take whatever is in the string uh, value for this parameter and present that to the user. Um, and then that will just wait until the user does keyboard input. And in this case, we're going to be assigning that input to this uh, info selection variable. So we've got the commandlet, we've got the prompt parameter, and then whatever we put into uh, that as a string is going to be what the user will see and then respond to. Whatever they type in can then be uh, can then be stored into this variable, and then that variable can be called upon later in the script when it comes to certain decision making logic and whatnot based on whatever the user input was. Very simple, very basic way to interact with a user and have them. Uh, supply you with some input. Um, problem with this is that it's not easily controlled and there is another method we'll look at now for parameters that will allow you to do um, some out-of-the-box constraints like making things mandatory and so forth. Um, and it's also what I like and I think is nice about parameters and adding those to your scripts is that it feels a lot like when you're running your script that you're interacting with a PowerShell commandlet. Um, if you notice here, we'll go ahead and type in the name of this script, which is parameter demo, and we do space dash, and you can see both of our parameters here. So we can select free space. It's a switch parameter. We could make it any kind of data type we want, um, but we have a switch parameter and then memory usage. And if I select free space and hit enter, it then runs the code and then gives me that free space back. Um, if I instead wanted to use the memory usage parameter, it gives me that. If I wanted to do both, um, 
then it's going to return both. Now the thing about this is, is that neither of these parameters are set to mandatory in this demo. Um, so that's why you have the uh, else if uh, block there starting in line 18, uh, because if neither of those are true, then I want to return to the user um, a prompt that says, please select a parameter. So if I try and run my script without um, including any parameter there, it's going to tell me, please select a parameter. So that is kind of like a way to make the script feel a little bit more like a commandlet. You just need to type in the script name and then select parameters there. So it's another way to allow a user to interact and provide certain input to a script. Um, the thing about it is, is that that can then be capitalized when you're going into other concepts that we might look to down the road in future videos where it comes to creating functions or even PSM1 files where you're going to you know, create your own PowerShell module and import that module and then start running the functions in a way that feels very much like a PowerShell commandlet that you're running within your own modules. And then those can have parameters. And then again, you can use various constraints there. Um, so I think the parameter option's best, but sometimes if you just want a quick and dirty script that's going to allow an end user to select some very basic options and uh, after you present them with a prompt, read host might be a good option for whatever it is you're trying to work on. So uh, if you have any questions or comments, um, please interact with the video down below if you'd like to get into more detail or um, have a future like part two video on user input. Um, give me a little bit of uh, viewer input and I'll see what I can do. Anyway, have a good day. Thanks a lot. And I'll see you on the next video.